Now all the shelves have been removed uh, from the fridge compartment, the next step in the job is to remove the control panels at the back. You can see there's one at the top here, which is a sort of light tower, uh, and then lower down you've got the actual fan cover. Uh, that's where all the components need to be changed. Uh, but the first step is uh, to remove the top cover. Uh, this is done by removing the screw at the top, which is this one. So we'll just take that off. And if you just get your hand behind the plastic, you can feel the cover popping off. Just be careful with it. Uh, they can snap normally around about the, the area where the round circle part is. So just be careful with that. As you'll see when you remove the light cover, you'll have a further three screws. One here, one here, and one at the bottom. It's just a case of removing them free. That's one. Two. And the one at the bottom. That's free. Now once all these three, three screws are out, just a case of getting your hand behind the side of the cover here and just gently prising it away. It will come slightly awkward. What you will need to do at this point is put your hand behind the cover and there's two plugs there. It need to just you need to squeeze them and the cover will come away. There we go, if I can just quickly show you the plugs that I'm talking about. It's these ones here. The little blue ones, uh, everybody asks about that, that's the air sensor that sits behind the purple cover. Uh, the other connector is for your lights. Uh, just make sure when you're rebuilding your fridge, you plug the both of these back in. Common mistake is to plug the big one in because there's longer wire, it's easier to do and people either forget to put this in or they don't put it in right so it's just a quick tip when you're rebuilding I'll zoom in on the connector where they go you can see here it's a blue connector well, basically it's slightly tricky when you're putting the cover back on but uh, you really need to get your hand behind and get the two connectors back on The next step in this repair process is removing the lower. In this video I'm going to show you how to remove the bottom fan cover of a Samsung RS21 or SRS model. Uh, the cover itself is basically held on with four screws. One behind each of the vents and two further down at the bottom behind the water bottle. So I'll quickly show you how that's done. First of all, you want to remove the little deodorizer covers. That'll give you access to the panels, the screw panels. And just basically remove the screw from both the top sides. Unplug the connector. go down to the bottom where the water bottle and the other two screws are. Basically um, you need to take the water bottle off first which is quite easy. Uh, you'll maybe notice on this uh, water bottle I've got a couple of the fast fit connectors on. Um, I'll show you in another video how to change a water bottle using these fast fit connectors. 
basically unscrew the bottle just slide it down gently and you'll get access to the two screws right at the bottom one on the right here and one on the left now you might find at this stage um, if you've got a lot of ice on your control panel this panel won't come off so good um, what you're best to do is leave it a good couple of hours let the ice melt I mean if you've got a lot of ice all around about the bottle and all up at the, the vent there you're probably going to struggle to get it off um, you can use a steam gun or some hair dryer or put a couple of big towels down the bottom and prise the cover off at the top there and then pour some hot water down the back uh, in this case this fridge has been off for a bit so this cover should come off quite reasonable um, generally what I do is I just prise it off at the top give it a bit sort of work around it and away it comes What you should see when you take the cover off is uh, something like this. In this case, this uh, the components have already been fitted to this fridge freezer, but uh, I'll explain what they are and uh, what they do. Once you've removed the fan panel off your RS21 or your SRS model, you should see something like this. Um, now if yours is covered in ice, the best thing to do is put a couple of big towels down the bottom of the fridge and uh, pour a lot of hot water all over the panel here just to get rid of all the ice. Making sure that the drain hole over here is nice and clear. If you don't manage to unblock that, you will get trouble when you build the components back up. Uh, that drain hole needs to be clear, so it's something that's uh, quite important to make sure that's clear. Um, personally, we I use a steam gun. Uh, but you can use hair dryer, hot water, whatever's uh, available to you, but uh, you've really got to make sure that is clear. Now, it does look as though there's quite a lot going on here. Basically, we've got a defrost heater, a drain heater, and two sensors. Um, you might be looking at it saying, where do I start? But basically, um, what I do is I just unplug all the wires up at the connector block that's this component up here don't worry about putting it back in you can't go wrong all the plastic connectors are keyed so you can't physically put them in the wrong way so don't worry about disconnecting all that what I tend to do next is As you'll see in this one, there's uh, already a little drain modification clip here. Uh, yours might have that. Nine times out of ten, it won't have it. This cloud just popped that off just now. It's really just squeezed on with a pair of long nose pliers. I just need to bend the clips out a bit to get that off. Now. What you want to do is uh, go up and down these little lugs that are on the right hand side and on the left hand side. That's how the main defrost heater is held in place. Uh, if there's any cable ties, you as well just to cut them. There's one up here, cut that. Um, what most folk use is a pair of long nose pliers to go up and down the defrost heater. Um, I find that a bit easier to use a pair of snips. They tend to grip the little lugs a bit easier so basically what you're doing is going up and down. I do the top row first. All the lugs on the top. I bend them just slightly. You don't want to bend it too much because you are going to have to refit these little lugs back on. Just go up and down. It can be a little bit tricky. Uh, and then do the same from the bottom side. Go along all the bottom lugs. 
that's that side. Um, I'll so try and zoom in on this side just to give you a better idea. Basically, you're you're putting the long the or your snips on the little aluminium lug and just twisting it slightly up and away from the element. Now that probably is the most trickiest part of the whole job when you're doing this RS21 or SRS21 repair kit. It actually looks a lot worse than it is to do. Now, once you've sort of went up and down and made sure all the lugs are away from your element, the element really should just pull away. Just make sure you've not got any cable ties still in place. If it's a bit tight, it's possible you've not released all the lugs. And once you take the element away, you'll sort of see where all the plugs are. Now the element itself is Plugged, double plugged with the drain heater so there's a wire coming up here from your drain heater and it's connected to the defrost heater and then the both of them are plugged in to the connector up here so once you get the actual defrost element out of the road the cooler starts to look a bit more simpler there is only three other items on here is the defrost sensor uh, basically, you need to use a little plastic clip again, so watch you don't break it. I generally just put a flathead screwdriver in and pop, pop it open. Try and zoom in a bit there just to give you a better idea. Just pop the plastic bit open and the defrost sensor will come out there. Another component we've got here is the thermal fuse which as you can see it's plugged into the top connector it runs right down the side here and right to the back that's very important that you put that thermal fuse right to the back some of the older models the thermal fuse was sort of positioned in the middle don't make that mistake you have to reposition that thermal fuse exactly where you see in this video here it's right at the back. To get the thermal fuse out, you can just pull the cooler forward slightly. Put on a little, little plastic clip up here and a little plastic clip down there. It does give you access to get behind and get the thermal fuse out. That's your thermal fuse there. Um, the older thermal fuses, you might find you don't have any of that foam on it. Um, but the new ones come with the foam, so keep the foam on it and put it right to the back, so if you like, between the pipes and the plastic casing. The last thing that's on this cooler is the drain heater. Basically, just pop it out, make sure the little pink wires come out the drain hole. It's going to be a little bit tricky. Mm -hmm. There's a little pink wires, uh, they're supposed to go down the drain hole. Uh, basically what they do when this heater is working properly is keep the drain hole clear so no ice gets builds up on it. If you're trying to remove the drain heater and it's quite resistant, it's probably there's still a lot of ice in the hole and it's freezing these wires. But again, make sure you pour hot water or steam down. Once you've got it all clear, this will lift straight away. Really? All you're left with now is the actual cooling component where your refrigerant will run round. <laughs>